Hello and welcome to your first QBasic lesson. Over the next few videos, we're going to learn enough of the programming language and techniques to get you going on writing your first real application, a random insult generator. On the school computers, you need to open the QBasic development environment by running QBasic.exe from the R drive. I'm actually running QB64.exe on my computer, as you can see up here, QB64, because I've got a 64-bit processor. It's pretty much the same for what we're going to do with it. If you check out our Modo announcements, you can find out where to get hold of QBasic. So you can run this at home um, on your own computer as well as on the school computers. This area here in the top of the screen is where we type in our lines of code that make up the program. And then we can run them and a new window opens up with the output from our program. The first thing I'll tell you about is the rem command, which doesn't actually do anything. Still, it's one of the most important commands in the language. Don't forget it. It stands for remark and it's where you type in comments about each chunk of code to help remind you what you're trying to do. So let's start with uh, this line of code here. Uh, and notice that what I've typed in here, REM, watch what happens here when I hit the enter key. See that it's changed to uppercase. And that happens when the computer understands what you've typed in. So it understands that's a real instruction, REM, and you've typed it correctly, uh, so it's accepted it. So typing remarks into our program enables us to see at a glance what our program is going to do. So it's always a really good idea to start a program with one of those. On the next line, I'm going to type in the following command. Now on your system, if you're running QBasic, to get the double quotes, you might have to do shift and the at symbol rather than shift and double quotes, simply because it's based on this really old technology. Uh, if you've got QB64, then the, the double quotes work fine. So when I run this program, the word hello is going to appear on the screen. So the double quotes here and here mark the beginning and end of what I actually want to appear on the screen. So again, if the word print hadn't converted to uppercase, it probably would have meant that I typed something wrong. The system's really picky about spelling and commas and punctuation and, and so on. So it's really important that you're very careful about what you type. Make sure it's exactly the same as what I'm typing in here. Right, now let's do file, save as. It's good to get into the habit of saving your programs regularly so that you don't lose any work if anything crashes or goes wrong. Um, now QBasic is really old and it runs in an operating uh, environment called DOS. So your file names are limited to eight characters uh, with no special characters like spaces or, or anything fancy like that. We'll call our program first dot bass again on the school computers it's probably just as well to keep everything in uppercase this thing here first f-i-r-s-t there that's the bit that only could be eight characters long and then the dot bass tells the system that it's a basic program so down here under paths you can see all the disks and folders that are available to you so on the school system you should make sure you use your n drive but it could be easily another letter at home or if you've got a usb stick at school for me, I'm using the iDrive, just simply because I've got a USB stick. The path up here shows you whereabouts in the folder structure you are. So, you know, where, where you're currently pointing. So if I was to save that file first.bass, it's going to save it on the iDrive, in this folder, in this folder, in this folder, in this folder, in this folder. OK, now if I want to navigate around, see these two dots here, if I double click on those, it's moved me up a level to the folder above. If I do it again, it's moved me up a level again. So you can you can use these things down here by double clicking on the letters. So if you wanted to go down to the end drive, if you've got an end drive, use this here on the right hand side to scroll up and down. And then you can double click on the end drive. And there we go. Right. If I save this now, I'll be on the end drive. I haven't actually got an end drive, so I need to go back to my iDrive. I'm just going to store it in the root directory. And first.bass, let's do OK. And there we go, it's saved. Right, now we can run the program by clicking on Run and then Start. Now, in my case, it's creating a .exe file, and then it's going to open a window somewhere else which has got the actual program in. Here it is. In the normal qbasic.exe, this happens a little bit faster. So here we go. It says hello at the top here, and then press any key to continue. So I usually just hit the enter key and that kills the window when your program is finished running. So there it is, you've written your first fully documented program. 
So try putting different bits of text in here and running it yourself and see how it works. It's important that you get those double quotes at the beginning and the end there correctly. Right, let's type the next instruction in. Uh, if I hit enter, we can see it's just spaced that out over here and it's uh, converted input to uppercase. So input, what is your name? So it's going to ask the user, it's going to print this bit out on the screen. The semicolon tells the system that uh, to keep the cursor in the same place and whatever happens next, just carry on typing straight after um, this bit of text here. And then name dollar, okay? This is something that we call a string variable. It's basically a box to put the name in so that we can use it later in the program. So if we want to store text, it must be in a string variable. And uh, the easiest way to create one of those is to give it a name. I've called it name. You could call it Fred or Bob or whatever you want to call it. And then just stick a dollar sign on the end of it. And that tells the system that it's going to contain just characters, text. It's going to be treated not as a number, but as text. So now we can print the name back to the user, sort of like a conversation. So we're going to type in print, OK, hello, and then retype their name back to them. What a silly name you've got. So let's enter that. Yes, it's accepted it. OK. Right, so you can see here that we're printing out some fixed text. OK, hello. So that's in between the double quotes. So that's always going to say OK, hello. Then the semicolon says put the cursor, keep the cursor where we are and carry on typing. And then we're going to repeat back to them what they typed in up here. Whatever went into that box called name dollar is going to be printed back out on the screen. And then we've got some more fixed text after the semicolon, uh, which is just what a silly name you've got. We can print out uh, this mixture of standard text and stuff that the user type so that our program is effectively doing something slightly different every time we run it. That potential for change is why we call the box that we created the, uh, for the user's input a variable. It can vary change every time that we run the program. So before we run it, let's uh, save that again. File, save. Now this time we just have to save it. It will overwrite whatever we had before. Um, so we don't need to save it as a different name again. That's important because if you've written some really bad code, it's possible to crash the QBasic app um, or even the whole computer. And if that happened, you would lose the code that you uh, if you didn't if you hadn't saved it. OK, let's run it. Run start. Here we, here we go. Hello, what is your name? So I'm going to type in my name. Tiberius, hit enter. OK, hello, Tiberius. What a silly name you've got. Right now, looking at this screen, that's great. Our program's worked. It's all fine. But we've got all this clutter up here and it would be quite nice to to get rid of the hello and what is your name. Uh, lines before we print out that little message there and there is actually a way of doing that so let's put our cursor at the end of the input line here hit enter so we've created a spare blank line in our program to type in at the next line of code and I'm just going to type C L S which isn't some sort of a, a boy band it's an instruction to clear the screen so if I just move the cursor away from that see that's converted to uppercase um, again, let's file, save the program, run the program. Hello, what is your name? Tiberius. And then it cleared the screen and now we've just got the message. OK, hello, Tiberius. What a silly name you've got. OK, so it's all going quite well so far. Now let's take things just a little bit further with some more input. We're typing input. How old are you? Semicolon age. So we've again got some fixed text that's going to be put out to the user. Semicolon, semicolon keeps the cursor where it is. And then we've put another variable here called age. Notice how it hasn't got a dollar on the end. Dollar means it's going to be text that goes into the box. In this case, with no dollar on the end, it's just going to be a number which goes into that box. Numbers are stored in numeric variables, no dollar. And text is stored in string variables, which has a dollar on the end. So we'll round it all off with one more little insult. So what have we done here? Print, that's rubbish. I'm twice your age, so I've got some fixed text that I'm putting out in between those double quotes. Semicolon, keep the cursor where it is. And now what the system's able to do is to take the number in the age variable, it treats this asterisk here as a multiplication sign, and then it's going to double it. So okay, so it's going to double the age and print that out. So let's have a look here. File, save that again. We're going to run this. Let's see what happens. What's your name? Tiberius. 
How old are you? Seven. Hit enter. That's rubbish. I'm twice your age. I'm 14. Right, so in that first lesson, we've learned about the remark command, which enables us to put comments in our program so we can understand what's going on. We learned about the print statement, which enables us to put text out onto the screen. We learned about the input statement, which enables us to take input from the user, whether it's in the form of uh, text, with a, in, putting it into variables with dollars on the end of the name, or whether it's into uh, numeric variables like this one here that doesn't have a dollar on the end. We've also learned how to clear the screen to keep our screen nice and tidy. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to do some simple loops, which are a really, really useful thing to be able to do in programs. And you'll certainly need to be able to do that in your random insult generator. Okay, thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.